afternoon everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Well, this is the time of year that I make my uh, pickles and I actually did go to the store and buy my pickling cucumbers this year uh, because I didn't plant any cucumbers and not only that, I do like the, pretty much the uniform size that you can get when you buy them and once again, I didn't plant any so I really didn't have much choice here. Now, I've already filled two of these jars. These are my 48 ounce jars and you can actually use old pickle jars if you want anyway, but any, this size, I love this size. I think it's perfect for uh, making my fermented pickles and that's what we're doing today. And unfortunately I had already gone through the process, filled two of these jars and I realized that I hadn't turned the camera um, well, the camera was on, but it wasn't recording. So fortunately, I still have some pickles left and I have another jar, so I'll go through the process again. So the first thing that I do is I add a couple of garlic cloves, just peeled and put in, and some. I have some uh, dill weed from my garden that I picked yesterday. It's still good. It's just a little limp because I picked it yesterday. And the other thing I add is one peppercorn. Now all of this I've grown myself and the dill weed you don't actually have to put it in. Um, you can use dill seed as well but I prefer to use the dill weed because I have it. And pickling spice. Now this is a batch that I put together myself a couple of years back and I do keep it vacuum sealed when I'm not using it because I made a huge batch. <laughs> so uh, one good heaping tablespoon of pickling spice and that's all you need. So those are my spices. Now the uh, other thing that you have to do is I kept my cucumbers in a bucket of ice water for maybe two hours or so. And I also had added some salt in that ice water, you know, just to help clean them in that. Now the one thing that you have to make sure of is that you trim the blossom end. And I've already done that to these. And if you don't know which one is the blossom end, trim them both, it won't hurt. But you should trim the blossom end. And then after that, it's just a matter of packing them as tightly as you can. And when they See, with these smaller jars, it does get a little bit harder. But we'll see how many, if, if we can get all of these in there. And, yeah, this one's going to be rough. Now, I could slice that one. And, you know, you could also do it wedges. I've never been terribly successful with wedges but you know it's it's a common practice to make wedges as well so we'll do a couple wedges just to get more in here since it's my last one anyway I might as well try to use it up and you pack these up as tightly as you can and I think that's <laughs> I think that's all we're going to get in there to tell you the truth Maybe I can put it in one of these other jars. Yes. Okay, now that you've got your pickles all done, now the other thing that we have to do is add salt water. So the ratio of salt water is one to three tablespoons for every quart of water. I'm gonna go with two tablespoons for every quart. Okay, so I've got a quart jar here. I've got my measuring spoons and I'm going to, as I said, two tablespoons and they're heaping tablespoons, so. And you want to dissolve this. And then we fill up each one of these jars.
and you want everything underwater. Now, if your um, spices float to the top, it won't hurt anything. But you want your pickles completely underwater. Okay, let's mix up another batch. I think another one should do it. much half an inch from the top. Perfect. Actually that's a little more full but it won't hurt anything. Okay so that step is complete. Now the next thing we want to do is, okay, if you have the tools where you can siphon all that stuff, yes, it works. You know, I've never bothered with that. I just literally um, put a cap on, and I make sure it is a plastic cap. It cannot be metal because the salt water will corrode. And you put this on somewhat, not tight. You know, you, you want this to be able to breathe. I have to find a third one. Okay, I've got my third one. Now, if you could not keep everything underwater, these are all very tight in there, so there's no way they're going to float. But if they were, or if you're doing other um, fermented things where you need to keep it underwater, I bought these, uh, what I call pickle pebbles, and you could use them to keep everything underwater. Uh, in this case, as I said, the uh, cucumbers are so tight in there that they're not going to float. So I'm not even going to bother to use them. But now the process is going to take, oh, probably about seven days, I guess, to ferment. And what I do, because <laughs> you need to, I put them in a bowl because they will leak. I'll explain that in a minute. So, put each one of these in a bowl and I put them aside. Well, I'll put them on my dining room table later. <clears throat> so every single day I burp this. All I do is just loosen the top and burp it, basically. Just let out some gas, some air. Um, as I said, you can get all these special tools where you can, you know, that does it automatically, but I found that this works just fine for me. And I've tried those tools, but I prefer just doing this. Um, so the reason you put these in a bowl is because during the fermentation process, gases are released and it'll push some of the fluids out. And I learned a long time ago that, yeah, you don't want this sitting in a puddle of fluid. It doesn't matter if it's at the bottom of this bowl, and after two days you can wash it out. And, you know, if you don't like it sitting in it, just wash it out and put it back again. But literally, at once or twice a day, just loosen it up, allow the gases to escape, and uh, you're good to go. And you'll find that after about a week, they're ready. And then you would put them in a cool storage. I put them in the back of my refrigerator and that's why part of the reason I don't do too many of them is because I really don't have the storage. When I had a basement cold cellar I would do a whole lot more. I would do uh, gallon jars and they lasted <laughs> two years like that but in this they need to be kept cool. So that's the process. I hope that you find that interesting and not too complicated. To me, it's probably one of the simplest processes. You can use any jar as long as you've got a lid that you can just loosen up. You know, it, it could be an old pickle jar. It doesn't have to be 
because these are, well, these two are never really designed for, you know, the larger size. They've never been designed for canning, you know. They're too large for canning, and you find that there are no, um, it, everything is for pints and quarts. All, all the information that you find is pints and quarts. So these, I don't believe, have ever been designed to be canned. Now, you could probably can juice in them, and that would be fine, but you wouldn't can other things because the timing would be off and you'd be guessing at it. You'd probably be safe, but as I said, I don't believe these were ever designed to use for canning. Now, this size works fine too. You just don't have as many cucumbers that will fit in here. Personally, I do like these, uh, this size. Anyway, rambling now. <laughs> so that is my method of making fermented dill pickles and they turn out awesome. I don't know about the ones that I slice but when I leave them whole they always turn out really crunchy, really nice. So give it a try. Pretty easy actually. Okay this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I'm going to shut this down, uh, put these on my dining room table because that's where I have space and uh, after a few days they do fade. You lose this uh, bright green color they you know and they uh, become a little bit lighter but uh, that's when you start to see that they're probably ready okay we're done for today talk to you soon bye for now